Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. This week, NERSA announced its decision on ESCOM's regulatory clearing account application. Terence Creamer joins me now to discuss the implications of the determination. Welcome, Terence. Hi, Sam. Tell me, how did NERSA come to the 9.4% tariff increase for 2016? In November last year, they received the application from ESCOM. It was quite late because this is for 2013-14. Now we're ready into 2016 now. But it's part of the, the third multi-year price determination. And the, what happens is every year there's variations either for um, ESCOM's account or the consumer's account. So if ESCOM over-recovers on revenue or sales, they should uh, theoretically pay back through the tariff. And if they under-recover, then they should re receive um, uh, through the tariff a reimbursement. And that was really what this, this, uh, this methodology was about, is to do that, that clearing or, or to deal with that variation. And Eskim in this application, as would be expected, made a, a, a very big claim of 22.8 billion rand for the 2013-14 financial year. And uh, then Eskim, um, NERSA initiated a process both of analysing the application from Eskim uh, and then also uh, opening it up to public comment. So there, was writ there were a number of written comments and then there were public hearings in six of the nine provinces um, during January and February, or early February, um, which uh, was basically to look at whether this was, a, was this prudently and efficiently incurred expenses that Eskom was justified in trying to recoup in the 2016 tariff. So the, that obviously, as you would imagine, there was um, a mixed view on that. Well, it was almost one-way traffic. It was Eskom's voice against everyone else. But the, in the final analysis, the regulator looked at the methodology, looked at uh, what was incurred by Eskom, and uh, decided to give them about half, about 11.2 billion of the 22 billion back in the tariff this year, which translates into a 9.4% increase on the wholesale tariff from April 1. 2016. Obviously, most of us consume electricity through our municipalities. Municipalities only adjust tariffs uh, on July 1, so municipal tariffs will probably be higher than the 9.4 for 2016 because they'll need to recoup those, those few months uh, difference from April to, to July 1. Um, so there will be uh, an adjustment in municipal tariffs as well. And uh, so that's really where we, where, how we got to this point. And what has the response been like from ESCOM and other stakeholders? Well, I think the good point for the regulators is nobody is happy. <laughs> and uh, that gives an indication that, uh, that maybe, it's been, maybe it's a fairly fair assessment that they've made. ESCOM is pretty unhappy um, with the fact that uh, they, they wanted, basically they wanted the tariff to increase by close around the 16% level this year. And a lot of that, there were two main components. There was a big revenue variation because they're selling less power than they thought because the economy and demand is, uh, the economy is slower and demand is down against what the MIPD uh, 3 said they could uh, sell, would sell. And this, the second big component was on diesel. In their complaint post the announcement, they focused heavily on the diesel ap uh, aspect because Eskom spent 10 billion in that year, that's 2013, 14, and, and in subsequent years it's been doing the same uh, on diesel. <coughs> and the regulator gave them back only about a one, uh, uh, just over 1 billion uh, for, that, uh, for that 8 billion claim that, uh, that they made for that year. So they, they spent 10 billion, they made a claim of 8 billion because they were allowed 2 billion uh, in the initial uh, MIPD3. So, uh, Eskimo is saying, you know, they did that in order to keep the lights on and the cost of unserved energy is obviously a lot higher than the 3 rand 50 or so per kilowatt hour of uh, diesel, cons uh, diesel burning. And they feel that this is a disincentive for them in future when they hit those constraints to then uh, burn diesel or use the open cycle gas turbines for extended periods because the, uh, uh, the they're not going to be able to recoup that diesel cost. Uh, the regulator's position, however, is that, you know, if Eskom had been able to maintain its coal-fired fleet to the point where its uh, electricity availability factor was in line with what was granted under the MYP3, there would have been no need to burn the diesel at the rate they did. Therefore, they don't feel they, that was an efficient use 
uh, of their, their plant, of their fleet. And therefore, all they were able to recoup was um, instead of the full, th full cost of diesel, they were recouped at the rate that coal would have been burnt in its place. So a far lower level. So that was a big bone of contention for uh, the utility. For the rest of society, also a fairly mixed reaction. Some welcoming that it's, got a, it's a lot lower than the 16.6 .6 that it could have been. Uh, I think the mining industry and a lot of business organizations made the point that this was at least some relief. But in the context of this very slow economy um, and very difficult, especially commodity environment, they're uh, saying that it still puts major pressure, another new cost pressure on mines, on factories, on farms. So there's generally unhappiness that's, uh, that there's another above inflation increase. And uh, there's a call that this shouldn't be a sort of, um, uh, you know, the start of a process where we just see these perpetual increases. You must remember that Eskom originally applied the MIPD3, they applied for 16% a year over the five years. They received 8%. So now there's a feeling that Eskom is continually going to try and recoup that or claw back to that 16% uh, type level that they originally wanted. And I think there was a big warning uh, at the public hearings that this could be a sort of perpetual process where we keep coming back year after year and allow Eskom to recover uh, what they, they didn't get in the first place. What is likely to happen next on the power tariff front? Well, I think that was also an important line in the sand that NERSA made. They said they, they're not going to really entertain any more RCA, re regulatory clearing account applications for MYPD3. They, so they made this point in the context of very different, different assumptions now uh, that will, when we proceed forward versus what was made back in 2013 when, or 2012 when this application was made. Mostly demand is much, much lower uh, than it would have been uh, in the uh, in the application or the MIPD3 approved. Um, and also Eskom's um, availability and the new build isn't quite what it was assumed to be in the MIPD3. So they're saying instead of, let, instead of going through this process year after year of RCA applications, where there's obviously going to be a massive revenue variance because they're not selling the, the, the megawatt hours they were expecting to sell uh, at the beginning of the process. And also Eskom hasn't met its side of the bargain in keeping its energy availability factor up and bringing Kusili and Madupi in particular on into the system in the time frames initially indicated in the in the application and then eventual uh, determination, we need to go to immediately to an MIPD4, and uh, I think that that's a that's a wise decision because the uh, it was it's just going to be the regulatory clearing account application just going to get bigger and bigger for the subsequent four years of the five-year determination. So Eskom has been given three months to come up with a new application. Uh, this is a very tight time frame, uh, I think, because uh, Eskom was initially planning to put in some more RCA applications, so I don't know how much work they've done on, on, in MIPD4. They had hinted that they were looking at an MIPD4 over a longer period than, uh, than five years, like a 10-year type pr pricing path. Whether the methodology, whether the regulator will accept such a long period, it's, it's unclear. And uh, we've never really been able to stick to um, to the price, price predictability that the MIPD is supposed to offer anyway. But that was one of the, the suggestions that they're looking at a much longer price path to get to what they say is a cost reflective tariff. So I imagine some work has been done, but you must understand in this process, Eskom has to consult with the National Treasury and with Solga uh, prior to making that application to NERSA. That means we've already got 90 days um, I imagine they need to get that in between, into Treasury and Salga within the next 60 days at least to meet that 90-day deadline. Or we might see Eskom seeking a bit of an extension to that. But So it is a tight time frame, but I think it's a clever move by the regulator because I think they saw the writing on the wall and that was going to be Eskom driving up the uh, N1 motorway year after year with a new RCA application to deal with major variances on both the revenue and the costs. Thank you, Terence. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.